So question number three in the final paper is usually vertical projectile motion. And this question starts off to say, a small ball is dropped from a height of two meters and bounces a few times after landing on the cement floor. We need to ignore air friction. The position time graph below, not drawn to scale, represents the motion of the graph. I can see they've given me the position, which is in meters, and as well as the time in seconds. Question 3.1 says, define the term free fall. 3.1, free fall, the motion of an object under the influence Gravitational force only. So free fall is the motion of an object under the influence of gravitational force only. Point two, point one. So let's read the next question. So 3.2.1, 3.2 says, use the graph and determine. 3.2.1, at the time that the ball is in contact with the floor before the first bounce the time that the ball is in contact with the floor before the first bounce. Remember when it bounces, it's a change in time. So it's time final minus time initial. And looking on the graph, you can see the final bounce was 0 0.67. The initial bounce was 0 0.64. Let's calculate that one, 0 0.67 minus 0 0.64. So the time will be 0.03. Always remember to two decimal places, 0.03. Time is measured in seconds. Let's look at the next one, 3.2.2. The next question of question three says, the time it takes the ball to reach its maximum height after the first bounce. So the time it reaches its maximum height after the first bounce. Again, I'm going to say time. Remember, the time taken to reach maximum height, 1.90 minus 0 0.67, time for the initial bounce, divided by 2. And this will give us the time taken for the ball to reach its maximum height, 1.90. You can put it exactly as it is on your calculator, 0 0.67 all over 2. If it gives it to you as a fraction, you change, you press SD. To two decimal places, this will give me 0 0.62. The 5 will change the 1 to a 2. 0 0.62. SI unit for time is again seconds. Let's see what the next question says. We are now on question 3.2.3. .3. Now they want the speed at which the ball leaves the floor at the first bounce. So we then need to calculate the initial velocity at which the ball leaves the first bounce. I'm gonna need more space here. So for 3.2.3, .3, you could have done it in two various ways or two options of doing it. I'm just gonna do the one. So VF squared, remember you do get a mark for, use, for choosing the correct formula. 2a delta y, if we throw up and down, we use delta y. Maximum height, velocity is zero. I am looking for the initial velocity at which the ball leaves the floor. I have a two, gravitational acceleration is 9.8. And my delta y, I'm gonna take as minus 1.8. Remember, you also need to choose direction. For this specific question, I have taken down as a positive and I have taken up as a negative. You can do it vice versa. I'm going to solve for this part here. I'm gonna put exactly as it is on my calculator. Remember to always put it in brackets. I'm gonna have two, 9.8, and negative 1.8. Therefore, I get negative 35.28. I've got zero on this side, VI negative. This is squared, 35.28. I'm going to make VI the subject of the formula. It will be a negative coming on this side, and negative divided by negative will give me a positive. That is in why I'm gonna have VI squared, 
is equal then to a positive 35.28. I need to have VI by itself. I'm going to put both of these under a square root. This and this will cancel, giving me or leaving me with just VI. I'm going to take the answer that I got here, put it under square root, which is 35.28. So the initial velocity at which the ball leaves the floor will be 5.94. The 9 will change the 3 to a 4. So that will be 5, 94. The SI unit for velocity is meters per second to the exponent in negative 1. Let's look at the next question. The next question continues to say 3.2.4. Still, you must use the graph. The time t, which is indicated on the graph, which is this time over here. So this was a long question. It's two questions, actually. But 3.2.4, you need to use your graph to actually solve it out. The first part, we first need to calculate the velocity upwards. So Vf squared is equal to Vi squared. You do get a mark for your formula. is 2a delta y. Final velocity at maximum height is 0. Initial velocity is what I am then looking for. That is squared plus. I've got 2. Gravitational acceleration is 9.8. The t is at the last bounce, which is a height of negative 1.2. Again, I have taken down as a positive, and I've taken up as a negative. I'm going to have 0 is equal to vi squared. I'm going to solve this part of the equation. Remember to put everything in brackets. I'm going to have 2, 9.8, close this bracket, and negative 1.2. Therefore, just do that one again. I'm going to have 2, 9.8 multiplied by negative 1.2. There we go. Let's press change, equal, change. Therefore, I get 23.52. So I'm going to have a negative 23.52. I'm going to change them around. When vi squared comes to this side, it becomes a negative, but negative divided by negative will give me a positive. Therefore, I can write it as vi squared is equal to positive 23.52. I'm going to put both under a square root. This and this will cancel, leaving me with just vi. Let's put that answer under a square, under a square root and see what we have as our initial velocity. I'm going to have 23.52 which will give me 4.85, always to two decimal places. I'm going to say 4.85 meters per second to the exponent 1. But we are not done, and this is then upwards. We are still looking for the t. Therefore, I'm going to continue to the second part of this question, because it was for six marks. Vi plus a delta t. Final velocity is zero. My initial velocity is the velocity that I've got here. Remember, if your answer is wrong here, continuous assessment on this side, just put the correct answer, the answer that you got here. 4.85 plus my A is 9.8 for gravitational acceleration, and I'm looking for delta T. I'm therefore going to take this portion to the other side leaving me with negative 9.8 delta t is equal to 4.85. Now, I need to have the delta t by itself. I'm going to divide both sides by the negative 9.8. What you do on the one side, you do on the other side. This and this will cancel, leaving me with just delta t on this side. Let's see what we have here. So I'm just going to take the answer that I have here, divided by negative 9.8. And therefore, I'm going to get negative 0 0.49. The 4 won't change the 9. Remember, we don't have negative time, so you just leave it as 0 0.49. I can't say negative well, half plus 1, and that is second. But remember, time up is equal to time down. So 0 0.49, I must multiply that by 2. And I must also add 1.97 to find the total t. So we, let's do that. I'm going to start with these two, 0 0.49. Multiply that by 2. Time up is time down plus the 1.97 that I've already gotten on the graph. 
So the time t that is indicated on the graph will therefore be 2,95. 2,95. The SI unit that we use for time is seconds. And that is in how you would answer this vertical projectile motion. Remember to always look at your diagram.